Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Let's continue our journey through the lymphoid neoplasms. Cancers derive from the B and T cell lineage. In our last sketch, we met the leukemias, and now we're moving on to the lymphomas. And you might say to yourself, emias, omas, say what? Well, let me explain. If the neoplastic cells take over the bone marrow, subsequently causing cells to leak out into the bloodstream, that's a leukemia. We saw this in the last sketch. With acute B and T cell lymphoblastic leukemia, chronic lymphoblastic leukemia, and hairy cell leukemia. It's all about getting into that bone marrow. It's just what they crave. Lymphomas, on the other hand, such as Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin, originate in the lymphatic system, including the lymph nodes and spleen, where they form tumors. That's the oma in lymphoma. No marrow necessary. Alas, nothing in life is that simple. And leukemias can involve lymph nodes and look like lymphoma, while lymphomas can take over the bone marrow and present like leukemias. So, the best you can do is take a look under the microscope. Analyzing the morphological or molecular characteristics of the cancer cell in question is key to understanding what kind of lymphoid cell you're dealing with, and from whence it came. And on that note, welcome to Hodgewart's School of Wizardcraft and Witchery. This hidden Scottish castle houses one of the world's oldest schools for magic. Every year, hundreds of aspiring young wizards and witches arrive by train eager to learn from the finest faculty in the world. Students have an opportunity to master everything from potions to spells, while bonding with friends over a game of chess or a trip to the Owlery to write home. You know what else takes place in the Owlery? T secret magic. <laughs> yep, we're going to be practicing our spells up here, accidentally mutating a few B cells while we're at it. Hodgkin lymphoma, first described by Dr. Thomas Hodgkin in 1832, is a neoplasm of B cells. So to start off this sketch, Let's draw in our usual B-cell archers, complete with antibody arrows. Now, in acute lymphoid leukemia, B-cell precursors in the bone marrow get mutated, causing immature lymphoblasts to fill the marrow and blood. And in chronic lymphoid leukemia, a B-cell a little later in the lineage decides to mutate and send a bunch of mature B-cells into the marrow and blood. In the lymphomas, such as Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin, the B-cell makes it out of the marrow mutation-free. Woohoo! It then floats around in the blood for a while. Then it hits the lymphatic system. And then it gets sidetracked in a lymph node. The hottest place in a lymph node? The germinal center, of course. It's like a warehouse party full of B cells. Just getting lit and rubbing up against each other. Interacting with helper T cells, proliferating, differentiating, and most importantly, mutating. So that they can make more selective antibodies. This is called somatic hypermutation, and if you were to analyze a Hodgkin lymphoma B cell, you'd see that it's already gone through this step. B cells also undergo antibody class switching at the germinal center, which lets them shift from IgM production to something more fun, like IgG production. Anyways, since we're in the allery, a germinal center will be represented by an owl nest. Think of it as a place where owls proliferate. As you can imagine, when all that DNA is switching around and mutating at the germinal center, accidents can happen. Hodgkin lymphomas stem from a single mutated B cell in the germinal center or right after it leaves the germinal center, stuck somewhere in the stages of normal differentiation. 